This film begins by showing a young man named Lee Jung Do, who has just woken up and immediately starts doing push-ups to maintain his physical fitness. Jung Do holds black belts in three martial arts disciplines, Judo, Kendo, and Taekwondo. In addition to working out, Jung Do enjoys playing online games with his three friends, Moisture, Ryder Kong, and Earthworm, after finishing his martial arts training. At that moment, Jung Do and his friends were also delighted because they managed to win their match that day. Not long after, Jung Do received a phone call from his father, Lee Sang Woo, who owns a small fried chicken shop in one of Seoul's corners. It turned out that Sang Woo was calling Jung Do to help deliver fried chicken orders to customers. Despite being a black belt holder in three martial arts disciplines, Jung Do is known as a polite and friendly young man to everyone. This made many of Sang Woo's fried chicken customers happy with Jung Do's attitude. That evening, as Jung Do was returning to his father's fried chicken shop after delivering the orders, he accidentally saw Cho Min Jo, a Seoul Central District Probation Officer, fighting a man in a narrow alley. After Min Jo successfully subdued the man, who was suspected of being a criminal, the man suddenly attacked him with a broken bottle lying nearby. Fortunately, Min Jo was wearing a bulletproof vest, which saved him from the criminal's attack. However, the criminal eventually cornered Min Jo, prompting Jung Do to get off his bike and help. Annoyed by Jung Do's presence, the criminal tried to fight the young man standing before him, but with his martial arts skills, Jung Do easily subdued the criminal. After the fight, Jung Do noticed that the criminal was wearing an electronic ankle bracelet. Thanks to his heroic actions in helping Min Jo catch the criminal, Jung Do received a bravery award from the Seoul Correctional Facility. This made Jung Do feel happy because the martial arts skills he had trained in since childhood could be beneficial to society. After the award ceremony, a man named Kim Sun Min, the manager of the electronic monitoring division where Min Jo worked, approached Jung Do for a chat. At that time, Sun Min introduced himself and explained that around 5,000 people across Korea were wearing electronic bracelets because they were perpetrators of violence, sexual crimes, and murder. Due to the high number of repeat offenders, the Korean government decided to issue electronic bracelets to those released from prison. In his division, Sun Min and his team have to monitor the offenders with these bracelets 24 hours a day via the GPS system embedded in the bracelets. Sun Min also informed Jung Do about Min Jo who was one of the team members tasked with immediately heading to the location of the offenders if the electronic bracelet signals that they are not complying with orders. Every officer is usually accompanied by a martial arts expert like Min Jo to anticipate any dangerous situations. Unfortunately, due to the injury Min Jo sustained the day before, Sun Min's division is now short-staffed. Sun Min then asked Jung Do about his job, and after hearing that he only worked helping his father at the fried chicken shop, Sun Min was quite surprised, especially since he had received information from Min Jo that Jung Do was skilled in martial arts. Jung Do then admitted that he holds black belts in three martial arts disciplines. Upon hearing this, Sun Min expressed his intention to recruit Jung Do to replace Min Jo for the next five weeks while he recovers from his injury. Considering that there is a shortage of officers with martial arts skills and they can't cover all the work, in his explanation, Sun Min mentioned that officers skilled in martial arts, like Min Jo, work in three shifts, rotating so that they can monitor the offenders properly. Jung Do, who received the job offer, admitted that he wasn't sure if he could handle the big responsibility like Min Jo, especially since he had only done work that he enjoyed so far. Not stopping there, Sun Min tried to persuade Jung Do by asking the young man to reconsider the job offer, emphasizing that it could be a very prideful job particularly if he could protect innocent civilians. As a result, Jung Do asked Sun Min for some time to think about the job offer. That evening, Jung Do met with his three friends to talk about the job offer from Sun Min and to ask for their opinions. Moisture and the others, after hearing the story, seemed to agree and supported Jung Do in accepting the temporary job from Sun Min, encouraging him to try something new that he had never done before. At the chicken shop, Jung Do also asked Sang Woo for advice regarding the job offer from Sun Min. Wisely, Sang Woo didn't want to pressure his son and said that he could accept the job if it would help him learn more things. After all, Sang Woo admitted that he could still run the fried chicken shop by himself, as it wasn't too busy. With advice from his father and friends, 
Jung Do then went to the Seoul Central District Probation Office to meet with Sun Min. Seeing Jung Do arrive at the office, Sun Min was pleased, especially after hearing that he had accepted his offer to temporarily replace Min Jo. Shortly after, Sun Min introduced Jung Do to all the members of his division who were present in the room. Sun Min explained that Jung Do would be working with their division while Min Jo recovered from his injury. Without wasting any time, Senior Officer Han Dong Hoon immediately began teaching Jung Do how to use the computer program to monitor the offenders with electronic bracelets. During the explanation, Dong Hoon showed him how the icons representing the criminals they monitored after their release on parole worked. When the icon is clicked, all the data on the criminal appears on the screen, which would help Jung Do during arrests. In addition, if the criminal's GPS icon turns yellow, indicating that the electronic bracelet's battery needs to be charged, Jung Do has the responsibility to warn the offender by phone. If the offender refuses to follow the instructions, Jung Do is permitted to take action along with a senior colleague from the office. After hearing all of Dong Hoon's explanations, Jung Do began his work by monitoring the whereabouts of the offenders on the computer screen. Three hours later, Jung Do started to feel bored because there were no suspicious signs from the offenders being monitored until he noticed one of the criminal icons, which was originally blue, had turned yellow. Quickly, Jung Do checked the identity of the offender, a man in his 20s named Yang Ho, who was a convicted sex offender. As a result, Jung Do called Yang Ho, but before he could say anything, Yang Ho mistook him for a food delivery person and quickly hung up. Not giving up, Jung Do called Yang Ho again, instructing him to charge his electronic bracelet. Unexpectedly, Yang Ho cursed at Jung Do, refusing the order before hanging up again. When Jung Do called for the third time, Yang Ho turned off his phone, prompting Jung Do to report to Sun Min. Upon hearing the report, Sun Min double-checked Yang Ho's identity, noting that he had only been released three months ago. Before setting off, Jung Do was given several pieces of equipment, including a bulletproof vest, a camera to record his activities, and a stun gun as an emergency weapon. With all the gear in hand, Jung Do then set off with Sun Min. While in the car on the way to the location, Jung Do asked about the stun gun he had been given. Sun Min explained that Jung Do could use the stun gun if he found himself in a cornered situation. When they arrived at Yang Ho's apartment, Jung Do noticed that the metal bars on the apartment window had been removed, leading him to suspect that Yang Ho intended to escape through the window if he felt threatened. To confirm who was inside the room, Sun Min quickly went upstairs to Yang Ho's apartment, pretending to be a visitor. At the same time, Jung Do was tasked with standing guard below the window, which was suspected to be the escape route. Inside the apartment, Yang Ho was forcing a woman to sleep with him until Sun Min suddenly knocked on the door after hearing a woman's voice inside the apartment. Yang Ho, furious at the thought of being arrested again, angrily told Sun Min to leave. At the same time, the woman continued to resist and deliberately opened the door for Sun Min, causing Yang Ho to attempt an escape by jumping out of the window, carrying a knife. Jung Do, who was already waiting below, casually greeted Yang Ho, who was shocked to encounter an officer. As a result, Yang Ho tried to attack Jung Do in an attempt to flee, but with his martial arts skills, Jung Do easily subdued Yang Ho, especially with the stun gun Sun Min had provided earlier. Soon after, Sun Min came down to handcuff Yang Ho, reading him his rights as a suspect. At that moment, Jung Do felt proud to have helped the police in apprehending the criminal. The next day at the office, while Jung Do was monitoring the movements of the offenders, he once again saw a red icon. According to the records, the offender was named Lee Jong In, who had previously committed a sexual crime. The offender was now detected near a playground area. So Sun Min and Jung Do immediately set out to prevent any potential crime Jong In might commit. Upon arriving at the park, Jung Do quickly chased after Jong In, who tried to escape. When caught, Jong In attempted to provoke Jung Do, nearly causing him to lose his temper. Fortunately, Sun Min intervened and restrained Jung Do from overreacting, reminding him that such actions could get him into trouble. Sun Min then contacted the local police to arrest Jong In and send him back to prison for his disruptive behavior. With Jung Doa's impressive performance over the past few days, Sun Min felt pleased, knowing he had chosen the right person. As a token of appreciation, 
Sun Min planned to treat him to dinner at a local restaurant. Unfortunately, Jung Do had already promised to hang out with his friends, so he asked Sun Min if he could invite them along. Sun Min didn't mind and agreed to treat Jung Do as friends as well. With his permission, Jung Do called his three friends to meet them at the restaurant where Sun Min would host them. That evening, Jung Do, already at the restaurant, introduced his three friends to Sun Min. Relaxed, Sun Min told them they could order anything they wanted, which led Moisture to shamelessly order some of the most delicious items on the menu. Sun Min didn't seem to mind and enjoy drinks with the young men, chatting about various topics. Sun Min even shared a story about how, in his youth, he had been in an accident and was saved by a police officer. As a result of the accident, his left leg was permanently injured, leaving him with a limp to this day. Despite his physical limitations, Sun Min remained determined to become a law enforcement officer, eventually joining the Seoul Central District Probation Office and becoming a manager. Through his work, Sun Min hoped that offenders released on parole would not repeat their crimes, making the world a safer place for everyone. Soon after, their food finally arrived and Sun Min immediately invited Jung Do and the others to enjoy their dinner. During the meal, Jung Do and his friends offered some of their food to Sun Min, whom they now regarded as an older brother figure they greatly respected. Meanwhile, Two officers at the office noticed that the battery of one of the electronic ankle bracelets was about to die, so they tried to contact the bracelet's owner, Min Do Wung, but were unable to reach him. At the same time, Sun Min, who had just finished eating with Jung Do and his friends, suddenly received a call from his subordinates about several electronic bracelet wearers who could not be reached simultaneously. Due to a shortage of staff, they asked Sun Min to check on one of the bracelet wearers. Fortunately, Sun Min and Jung Do were not far from the location where the electronic bracelet had lost contact, allowing them to quickly handle one of the cases. According to the records, Do Wung, the person Sun Min and Jung Do were tracking, was a murderer who had been released three months ago. There was a possibility that Do Wung held a grudge against someone living near the location where the bracelet signal was lost. Knowing that Sun Min and Jung Do had an important task, Moisture offered to drive them in his car to the last detected location of the electronic bracelet in the system. When they arrived, Sun Min asked Jung Doa's three friends to remain in the car as it could be dangerous outside for them. Soon after, Sun Min and Jung Do got out of the car and began their search, following the narrow streets until they found Do Wung's broken ankle bracelet lying on the ground. Quickly, Jung Do started searching for Do Wung's whereabouts in the area, scouring the quiet, narrow streets. Moisture, realizing the situation, decided to help by deploying a drone he had brought with him. With the drone, Sun Min was able to guide Jung Do more easily, eventually leading them to locate Do Wong. Without hesitation, Jung Do chased after the murderer, while Sun Min continued directing Jung Do through increasingly narrow streets, even causing him to run across rooftops to keep up with Do Wong. After the chase, Jung Do finally caught up to Do Wong who was now standing in front of a local resident's house, becoming enraged because he felt he was being treated unfairly by others. Seeing this, Jung Do tried to calm Do Wung down and offered his help, but Do Wung grew even more aggressive and attempted to attack Jung Do with a box cutter he had. Although Jung Do managed to avoid the attack, Do Wung got back up and turned the knife on himself. Quickly, Jung Do reported the situation to Sun Min over the phone. Sun Min then instructed Jung Do to calm Do Wung down, who appeared more agitated, now holding the box cutter to his own neck and on the verge of doing something unthinkable. In his attempt to de-escalate the situation, Jung Do began talking to Do Wung. At that moment, the suspect expressed his frustration, saying he was continuously mocked even after serving 20 years in prison. Do Wung felt angry and tormented by people constantly ridiculing him just because he wore an electronic ankle bracelet issued by the police. As a result, Do Wung believed the world would never allow him to live normally again, and death seemed like the only option left for him. Hearing this, Jung Do continued to reason with Do Wung, telling him that he had already paid for his mistakes by serving 20 years in prison. For this reason, Jung Do urged Do Wung not to give up now that he had just finished his long sentence. With patience, Jung Do kept reassuring Do Wung until he finally convinced him to lower the knife. Do Wung eventually surrendered without further resistance, 
breaking down in tears as he handed himself over to Jung Do. After Do Wung's arrest was successfully completed, Jung Do went home, where his father was waiting for him. As they talked, Jung Do expressed his gratitude for having such a kind boss like Sun Min. Sang Wu, hearing this, smiled with relief and pride for his son, who was now using his martial arts skills to help others. In the middle of the conversation between the father and son, the television broadcasted news that a prisoner named Kong Ki Jung would soon be released. Ki Jung was a brutal criminal responsible for a series of sadistic murders that claimed the lives of 15 people. Even though he had served 20 years in prison, many people still believe that Ki Jung was extremely dangerous and should not be released. The next day, the chief of Seoul Central District Probation, named Park, was seen holding a meeting with Sun Min and others regarding Ki Jung's release. Park was concerned about this particular recidivist, knowing that the monitoring division led by Sun Min would have a major responsibility in overseeing a former inmate as dangerous as Ki Jung. In addition to being understaffed, their budget was also very limited, which meant the monitoring division had to work extra hard to keep watch. The threat posed by recidivists like Ki Jung would only add to the workload of the officers. For this reason, Park planned to request additional funding so that Sun Min's division could strengthen their monitoring, particularly by hiring more martial arts trained officers who could assist in apprehending problematic recidivists. One afternoon, Jung Do visited his usual salon, owned by a woman named Ha Soon Jung, to get his hair cut and dye darker. Upon arriving at the salon, Jung Do noticed a suspicious man named Jim Nam who had just left the salon. Upon closer observation, Jung Do noticed that the man was wearing an electronic ankle bracelet, indicating that he had recently been released on parole from prison. As a result, Jung Do asked Soon Jung to confirm whether Jim Nam was indeed a customer at the salon and if he had done anything suspicious. Fortunately, Soon Jung explained that Jim Nam had only come in for a haircut and had not done anything unusual. After leaving Soon Jung's salon, Jung Do went to a small restaurant for dinner and happened to see Jim Nam holding the hand of the waitress for an uncomfortably long time. Jung Do noticed that Jim Nam seemed to be doing it on purpose, as if he was attracted to the waitress, who clearly looked uncomfortable with his actions. Feeling that something was off, Jung Do returned to the office where the officers complimented his new haircut. Soon after, Jung Do turned on his computer to search for information regarding Jim Nam. According to police records, Jim Nam was a sexual offender who had recently been released from prison. Therefore, Jung Do reported his findings to Sun Min about Jim Nam's troubling behavior. Sun Min then attempted to call Jim Nam to confirm, but he ended up cursing at him, prompting both Sun Min and Jung Do to immediately go look for Jim Nam. In the rain, Sun Min and Jung Do arrived at the simple restaurant where the waitress had previously been harassed. During the interrogation by Sun Min, the waitress admitted that Jim Nam had invited her to his house, but she had declined. With no other option, Jung Do and Sun Min began searching for Jim Nam separately to widen their search area. On the way, Jung Do remembered Soon Jung's salon, which Jim Nam had visited earlier that afternoon. As a result, Jung Do immediately headed to the salon. At the same time, Jim Nam had arrived at the salon and locked the door causing Soon Jung to panic, especially with his suspicious behavior. Seeing Soon Jung alone, Jim Nam seized the opportunity to force her to comply. Soon Jung then tried to resist until Jung Do arrived in front of the salon and heard her screams. As the salon door was locked from the inside, Jung Do had no choice but to break the glass door and quickly intervened, stopping Jim Nam, who put up a fight but ultimately lost to Jung Do, who was skilled in martial arts, Swiftly, Jung Do handcuffed Jim Nam while informing him of his rights as a suspect before taking him to the police station for legal processing. After the incident, Soon Jung thanked Jung Do for his heroic actions in saving her life from a criminal like Jim Nam. The next day, while Sang Wu was making breakfast for Jung Do, Sun Min visited his fried chicken shop to thank Jung Do for his brave actions in capturing criminals. As a result, Sang Wu felt proud of his son's courage and dedication praising Jung Do for doing something extraordinary. Not long after, at the office, Park held an important meeting with all the supervising managers to announce good news from headquarters. They would be receiving two additional supervisors to help monitor Ki Jung. 
Furthermore, their budget increase had been approved to recruit two new martial arts officers, allowing Sun Min's division to strengthen his team in overseeing the dangerous recidivists. In monitoring Ki Jung, Sun Min planned to increase the monitoring hours for the recidivist, considering the serious crimes he had committed, to ensure that he would not commit any more offenses that could disturb the community. After the meeting, Jung Do spoke with Sun Min and expressed his desire to continue working in the supervision division he led. As a result, Sun Min appeared very pleased to hear this and invited Jung Do to join the monitoring team for Ki Jung, who was set to be released from prison in 10 days. After that, Sun Min also gave Jung Do a new jacket as a symbol that he was now officially a contract employee in the supervision division. On the day of Ki Jung's release after 20 years in prison, he remained on parole, which required him to wear an electronic bracelet for the next 10 years. The monitoring team, including Sun Min and Jung Do, placed a bracelet on Ki Jung's ankle, ensuring that it was functioning properly. Once all the processes were completed, Ki Jung, looking rough, exited the prison under police escort to his house. Unexpectedly, outside the prison, an angry crowd was waiting, protesting loudly against his release. The citizens even threw eggs and shouted a series of insults at the former perpetrator of heinous crimes. They yelled that they did not want to live alongside a murderer like Ki Jung. Some people even attempted to attack the vehicle transporting Ki Jung as a form of protest against his release. The police struggled to contain the furious mob until they finally managed to escort Ki Jung safely to his home. That night, Patrolling police officers were seen circling the area around Ki Jung's residence to ensure that no dangerous incidents occurred involving the recidivist. At midnight, a man named Han Byung Soon came knocking on Ki Jung's apartment door. It turned out that Byung Soon was a gangster who had previously known Ki Jung in prison, and his purpose for visiting was to offer him a job. Without hesitation, Ki Jung accepted the job from Byung Soon, who was evidently planning to commit another crime. Unbeknownst to them, Jung Do was continuously monitoring Ki Jung from a distance through his electronic bracelet. The next day, when Ki Jung left his apartment, Jung Do, noticing this, immediately reported it to Sun Min. Since Jung Do had successfully incapacitated several criminals before, Sun Min and other senior officers agreed to allow him to follow Ki Jung. Without wasting any time, Jung Do took a taxi to follow Ki Jung, who was now walking towards a shopping center. Unfortunately, during the surveillance, Jung Do lost track of the recidivist in the underground parking lot. As a result, Jung Do quickly reported this to Sun Min, who was monitoring from the office. In the underground parking lot, Ki Jung got into a car to meet Byung Soon and a man named Kim Min Wook, a producer of illegal videos sold on the dark web. In their conversation, Min Wook offered to collaborate with Ki Jung to help produce videos of sexual violence offering 10 million won for each 10-minute video. With such a high payment, Ki Jung was intrigued by the job. Byung Soon, not wanting to miss the opportunity, offered to assist Ki Jung in recording and editing the violent videos. Additionally, Byung Soon and Ki Jung planned to find actors for the videos by kidnapping girls they intended to make victims. During this discussion, Jung Do arrived at the underground parking lot, and Ki Jung, seeing him, quickly informed Byung Soon and Min Wook that Jung Do was the monitoring officer following him because he was wearing an electronic bracelet. Upon hearing this, Min Wook instructed his men to get rid of Jung Do, who could interfere with their plans. Moments later, Jung Do was still searching for Ki Jung when he noticed a suspicious car with tinted windows. Since Jung Do couldn't directly check the vehicle, he chose to leave the parking lot and report his findings to Sun Min. From the office, Sun Min deliberately called Ki Jung's phone so that Jung Do could determine his whereabouts. In the phone conversation, Ki Jung lied, saying he was having lunch at a restaurant while he was still walking towards that restaurant. Upon receiving the report that Ki Jung was at a restaurant, Jung Do immediately left the parking lot to verify his claim. Just as Jung Do arrived in front of a restaurant, he saw Ki Jung already there, making a phone call with Sun Min. Since his suspicions about Ki Jung were not confirmed, Jung Do returned to the office to meet with Sun Min. In their conversation, Sun Min stated that they could not continue to monitor Ki Jung indefinitely, considering there were many other recidivists they needed to oversee. Not long after, Min Jo came to the office after several weeks of absence due to an injury. As a result, Min Jo thanked Jung Do 
for saving him previously. And as a gift, he gave Jungdo a pair of tactical gloves that he could use when fighting against criminals. The next morning, while it was still quite dark, a little girl named Li Minju was seen walking alone on the empty street to school. In the middle of the road, Minju stopped after seeing a cute little dog. Unbeknownst to her, Byung Soon had been stalking Minju and ultimately kidnapped her. On another occasion, Byung Soon called Yong Ho and gave the recidivist a job to help him create a violence video against Minju. Together with Ki Jung, Byung Soon and Yong Ho then rented an apartment unit in the building where Minju lived. Intending to use it as a place to confine the little girl so they wouldn't be suspected by the police as kidnappers. Additionally, Ki Jung received a down payment from Min Wook, who requested that he complete the video as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Yang Ho was tasked with distracting the monitoring officers so they wouldn't interfere with Ki Jung's work. As a result, Yang Ho deliberately caused his electronic bracelet to malfunction, prompting Min Jo, who was conducting surveillance, to immediately try to contact the recidivist phone, which had accidentally been turned off. Min Jo then reported this to Sun Min, who immediately contacted Jung Do that's still surveilling Ki Jung, who was getting a haircut at the salon. Sun Min then informed him that he and Min Jo would go to find Yang Ho, as he could not be reached, therefore he asked if Jung Do was willing to continue the surveillance alone. Unexpectedly, Jung Do seemed unconcerned about this, especially since Ki Jung was not showing any signs of suspicious behavior. That night, after leaving the salon, Ki Jung appeared to go to a building that was not his apartment. Amid the heavy rain that night, Jung Do hurried to follow Ki Jung to check the place. Unbeknownst to him, Jung Do was trapped by Ki Jung, who had deliberately cornered him with a group of thugs ready to beat him up. Without fear, Jung Do prepared with his tactical gloves to face all the opponents before him. Using various items around him, Jung Do began to take down the gang members one by one who were trying to eliminate him. Although he was injured at times, Jung Do persevered until he was able to subdue all the gang members. After winning the fight, Jung Do quickly left the scene to escape. Meanwhile, Sun Min and Min Jo entered the location where Yang Ho's electronic bracelet signal was, which turned out to be in a recycling factory. As they got out of the car and entered the factory area, they suddenly heard a woman scream for help. Without hesitation, Sun Min and Min Jo rushed toward the source of the sound, but it was a trap set by Yang Ho to lure the two officers into the gathering place of the thugs. Sun Min and Min Jo then tried to escape from the gang, but they were continuously attacked, leaving them overwhelmed. Sun Min, who couldn't fight, struggled to defend against Yang Ho's attacks, while Min Jo appeared to be injured after one of the gangsters stabbed him with a sharp weapon. The sheer number of gangsters attacking caused Sun Min and Min Jo to be powerless, and both seemed to have sustained serious injuries from the assault. On the other hand, Jung Do, having successfully escaped from the gangsters, tried to call Sun Min's phone. Unfortunately, Sun Min could not answer the call because he had lost consciousness in the recycling factory. Jung Do's tablet, which he usually used to track the whereabouts of offenders, was also broken, prompting him to take the initiative to go to Ki Jung's apartment to search for the recidivist who had trapped him. In the rented apartment unit, Ki Jung was seen wearing a plastic mask and preparing to make the crime video that Min Wook desired. Additionally, Byung Soon appeared to be setting up his recording equipment. Upon arriving at the apartment building where Ki Jung was staying and carrying out his actions, Jung Do began to observe his surroundings until he noticed traces of water and an umbrella that Ki Jung had used earlier. Jung Do then followed the trail to one of the apartment units, which he believed was where Ki Jung was committing his crime. Without wasting time, Jung Do knocked loudly on the apartment door, causing Ki Jung and Byung Soon to stop their activity. Unable to open the front door, Jung Do ran to the back of the apartment to remove the iron bars installed on the window. When one of the residents saw his actions, Jung Do asked the resident to quickly call the police because there were criminals inside. With all his strength, Jung Do managed to open the window bars and then kick the glass to gain entry into the apartment. Shortly after Jung Do entered the apartment, he was suddenly attacked by Ki Jung. During the struggle, Byung Soon arrived and stabbed Jung Do in the stomach with a sharp weapon. Jung Do then fought back and succeeded in subduing Byung Soon. After that, Jung Do had to face Ki Jung again, who was choking him, but fortunately, he managed to free himself and cause Ki Jung to fall unconscious. 
Despite his injuries, Jungdo tried to calm Minju, who was being held captive and intended to free the little girl. At the same time, Ki Jung rose again to attack Jungdo. Just before Jungdo could lose his life, the sound of police sirens echoed around the apartment, causing Ki Jung to panic. When the police arrived, Ki Jung continued to assault Jungdo, prompting the officers to demand his surrender while firing a taser at him. Strangely, Ki Jung was still able to stand and retaliate against the police before ultimately fleeing to avoid being thrown back in prison. The police quickly called an ambulance for the seriously injured Jung Do and rescued Min Ju. Moments later, Sang Wu received news about Jung Do being hospitalized. Without hesitation, Sang Wu, worried about his son's condition, rushed to see him, who was now injured all over his body. Because of this, Sang Wu appeared disappointed with the Seoul Central District probation, which seemed to allow its officers to be severely hurt. Consequently, Park apologized to Sang Wu regarding the incident that befell Jung Do. During this opportunity, Park also informed Jung Do that Sun Min was injured and still required intensive care, while Min Jo did not survive the previous gangster attack. Hearing this sad news, Jung Do felt devastated and could not hold back his tears. As a mark of respect for Min Jo, Jung Do, along with other members of the Seoul Central District Probation, attended the final tribute ceremony for Min Jo, who had dedicated his life to protecting the citizens. After the ceremony, a woman claiming to be Min Ju's mother approached Jung Do to thank him for his actions that saved her daughter. The middle-aged woman also handed him a letter from Min Ju, expressing her gratitude to Jung Do for helping her reunite with her parents. On another occasion, Jung Do visited Sun Min, who was recovering well despite having suffered severe injuries from repeated blunt force trauma. At that time, Jung Do admitted he was still unsettled because Ki Jung had not yet been captured. As a result, Sun Min asked Jung Do to leave the matter to the police. When Jung Do was visited by his three close friends, he recounted Ki Jung's escape. Although they were civilians, Moisture and the others agreed to help Jung Do capture Ki Jung, who was troubling the community. During the conversation, Jung Do remembered the suspicious black tinted car in the underground parking lot. Therefore, Jung Do, who had memorized the car's license plate number, quickly asked Moisture to help him find out the owner of the vehicle. Without wasting any time, Moisture went to see his older brother, Jung Ho, who was an IT expert. Moisture then asked Jung Ho to look up information about the car that Jung Do had seen. Before long, Jung Ho successfully obtained information about the vehicle's owner and their address. Additionally, he handed a USB to Moisture and asked him to plug it into the owner's computer so he could hack into it. At the same time, Kong and Earthworm were seen purchasing tactical gear and protective vests for Jung Do, who would soon confront Ki Jung. Some time later, Jung Do and his three friends arrived in front of the vehicle owner's apartment and waited for a resident to exit so they could enter as the apartment complex could only be opened from the inside. Once they reached the unit they were looking for, Jung Do and the others tried to force open the apartment door, triggering the alarm. Panicking, Jung Do and the others planned to escape just as Min Wook, the owner of the car Jung Do had seen, was exiting. Because of this, Jung Do and his friends quickly captured and bound Min Wook. Moisture then promptly connected his brother's USB to Min Wook's computer to hack into the system where Jung Do and the others were shocked to find files containing various violence videos committed by Ki Jung. With this evidence, Jung Do then forced Min Wook to reveal Ki Jung's whereabouts, but he refused to provide the information until Jung Do became frustrated and injured one of his eyes. Jung Do then threatened to leave Min Wook injured and blind if he continued to refuse to disclose Ki Jung's location. To receive medical attention, Min Wook finally agreed to provide the information that he and Ki Jung usually communicated via messages that would indicate their locations. With that information, Jung Do called the authorities to report several locations that Ki Jung had visited in the past few days. After coordinating with the police, Jung Do and his friends returned to Jung Do's home, where they discussed the next steps they would take. From the messages on Min Wook's phone, Jung Do and the others began marking areas frequently visited by Ki Jung and planned to carry out a direct ambush against the criminal. That night, Jung Do and his friends went to an area that Ki Jung had previously visited, based on the messages sent on Min Wook's phone. 
They began preparing their equipment, including Jung Do, who put on his tactical gloves and got ready to face the gangsters. After that, Moisture flew his drone to monitor his three friends as they conducted the search. The search commenced when they arrived at a suspicious inn, where Jung Do, Kong, and Earthworm overheard gangsters chatting. Realizing that the inn was the gangsters' hideout, Jung Do asked Kong and Earthworm to return and meet Moisture because he didn't want his friends to get hurt. At the same time, Moisture continued to monitor from above using his drone. Shortly after, Jung Do entered the inn and shouted for Ki Jung. As a result, all the gangsters present were irritated with his arrival and immediately attacked him with various weapons, including knives. Fortunately, Jung Do was wearing a protective vest, which prevented him from being injured. Additionally, with his martial arts skills, Jung Do was able to fend off the gangsters attacking him one by one. Ki Jung, aware of the situation, decided to escape through the narrow streets surrounding the inn. At the same time, not wanting to lose track of the criminal, Moisture continued to guide his drone to follow Ki Jung. Returning to Jung Do, without wasting much time, he managed to subdue all the gangsters before searching for Ki Jung. Additionally, with guidance from Moisture connected via phone, Jung Do was able to locate Ki Jung. The two became embroiled in a fierce fight in a butcher shop until Ki Jung exhausted himself and attempted to attack Jung Do with a knife. Several times, Ki Jung tried to strike Jung Do, who continued to fight back. Just when Jung Do found himself in a tight spot, Moisture intentionally directed his drone to injure Ki Jung's eye. Seizing the opportunity, Jung Do attacked Ki Jung, and with a powerful kick, he knocked Ki Jung unconscious. Jung Do then handcuffed Ki Jung while reading the rights he had written on his hand. For the heroic actions of Jung Do and his three friends, the four received an award for bravery from the government. During the award ceremony led by the president of Korea, Sun Min and Jung Do's father, sitting in the audience, looked proud of Jung Do and his friend's courage. After the photo session, Min Ju arrived with her mother to present a bouquet of flowers to Jung Do, who had saved her. The little girl expressed her gratitude for Jung Do's help, which made him happy to have assisted the community. At the end of the film, it showed Jung Do officially appointed as a civil servant responsible for monitoring released offenders in the Seoul Central District Probation, and he would work together with Sun Min again. Moral lesson from the story, always wear your tactical gloves when facing bad guys. They might not help you dodge flying eggs from angry crowds. And remember, if someone offers you a job making weird videos, it's probably a sign to just stick to cat videos instead.